I'm very pleased to be able to speak with Mr. Aditya Puri, the Managing Director of HDFC Bank, one of the leading private sector banks, a leader in the market share on a number of consumer banking fronts, but also a universal bank and a proxy for the Indian economy. Thank you very much for speaking to us today. Pleasure, Daniel. HDFC, the organization, and HDFC, the bank, um, give us a sense of what is this bank and how is that associated with the HDFC group? HDFC is a shareholder in HDFC Bank. Uh, they own 23%. We are run separately as two separate organizations. But since it's the same brand, we have an arrangement on housing loans whereby we sell an HDFC housing loan and then they process those loans for us and we buy back 70% of what we originate. So that is the only real intercompany transaction we have. The bank has an independent board and an independent management. HDFC has two members on that board. And in the time of that relationship, you have now grown from strength to strength and you are a full-fledged universal bank in your own standing yeah. in, in that regard. Um, give us a sense of um, your leadership of this institution. Um, if you look at the balance sheet of the institution, it looks like it looks like a defensive balance sheet, one which is very focused on liabilities, um, very um, you know under leveraged, if you might say, uh, and also very focused on the organic business rather than on uh, generating returns to treasury and you know all the all the good stuff that makes banking today. Is that partially because India is so successful that you don't need to um, you know put a stress Listen. on your balance sheet in that way? Okay, let me backtrack a bit. Firstly, I, we do believe banking is conservative business. This newfangled banking, which nobody understood, led a lot of people into trouble. Thank God we didn't have the intellectual capability to understand it. Okay. So banking, in our view, has remained and will remain a relatively simple proposition. The moment you transform banking into leading the real economy or into a life of its own not related to a client, or not regulated or depending upon basis risk, that's no longer banking. And especially I think that flourished because you had a very low capital requirement and you didn't have a problem. But most mathemat mathematical models say other things being equal. But whenever you have a problem, other things are not equal. So even they failed. Now coming back to HDFC Bank, uh, I wouldn't say we are conservative. Uh, but I would say we are prudent because it's not our money, it's the depositor's money and we'd like them to sleep peacefully at night. So we are focused on balancing risk and reward. We clearly define our target market. If we are not getting the risk and reward, we will not grow for growth's sake. However, in any activity that we participate, we want to be in the top three. So risk and reward, clear definition of the target market that we will do, extremely focused on good execution and customer service, and we believe a brand is built at multiple levels. Of course, it's built through advertising, but it's also built with your experience with the customer every time he touches you. Tell me, um, it's, it's easy to uh, you know, talk about these values today now that you are on, on top of the hill. Was there a time when you were the underdog uh, during the time when India was only just taking off and uh, all of the different players were fighting for market share, there was a lot of price war, uh, there was destruction along the way which then eventually made you, um, you know, the king on the hill. Um, was there a time when you felt like that you were the underdog? We never felt that we were the underdog. We did feel that uh, time is an excellent judge. And having been in banking, you know banking is never a one-way street. And you cannot take risks which are not commensurate with rewards because then you will not be able to provide for the delinquencies that will come up. These things normally happen in an economy where supply exceeds demand. And when people get desperate to grow, then they take risks which are not commensurate with reward. In India, fortunately, demand for financial services will exceed supply for the next 10 years. So consequently, any irrational behavior was probably either uh, thinking that you will uh, gain something too fast, but it was totally unnecessary. 
because we, underdog or overdog, we grew at 30% compounded from the day we started, between 25 and 30% compounded. So we saw no reason at all to burn the candle at both ends in terms of take a higher risk with a lower return and then not get the required return on equity. And in retail, what clearly happens is you can't predict when you will get the default, but a default on the product will come. Well, give us a sense of the competition in India's market in your words. How, would, how do you see uh, competition in financial services in India today? I think the competition is intense. However, I think there is no need for irrational competition. Also, I believe people, you know, I get these comments like retail banking is risky in India. Absolutely not. When demand exceeds supply, how can it be risky if you've got your systems right? It's risky if you don't have the right target market, you don't have the right systems, and don't follow the right processes. So the competition is intense. It passed through a period of irrationality. Today, I think it's very rational, but intense competition. And who would you put as some of your um, honorable competitors in that sense? Uh, other institutions that you look at to benchmark whether you're on the right track? I think State Bank has done a very good job. I think Chartered is doing well. Uh, ICI, ICI slowed down because they had to readjust something that they gave as their stated policy. So we have different competitors for different segments. In the retail space today, we only really have uh, State Bank is major competition, and we are leaders by far. Uh, on the corporate space, we have State Bank and ICICI and Chartered. So, uh, and on transaction banking, I would say it's Corporation Bank, State Bank, ICICI, Chartered, and Citi. We, we know a lot about your retail banking business, but we hear very little about your corporate banking, your transaction banking business. I want to come back to that in a second. Um, the question I want to ask before that is, you seem to be succeeding on the deposit side of your business very, very well. Um, in fact, if you look at activity-wise, um, your bank is going further down the line, maybe because of the brand or the perception, or maybe because of the service that you're providing. I'm not sure which, but why do you think that you're succeeding on the CASA side of your business? See, CASA, the, the two things we have to understand about CASA. CASA and HDFC Bank is embedded into our business model. We are the number one player in transaction banking. That means we collect and make payments for all sections of uh, the economy. So the corporate, the stock exchange, the commodity, uh, the uh, agriculture, the, uh, the micro enterprises. For all these guys, when you collect and pay and you're the largest, then you are left with an involuntary float. So as long as our transaction banking business grows, the float will grow. 55% of the settlement on the stock exchange happens through HDFC Bank. Stock market grows, our float grows. 65% of the settlement on the commodity exchanges happens on HDFC Bank. We are number, the number two collector of income tax uh, for the government. That adds to the float. In addition, on the retail side, we have got specific products aimed at making it convenient for the retail customer to bank with us. You know, whether it's three drafts, we are number two to our state bank in RTGS. We are not number two in size. RTGS is the transfer. So it just shows the quality of service that we get. So our average balances on the savings account because of the penetration are about two and a half times anybody else. So there's this concept that uh, investors have been asking me forever. You know, others are also coming in. When are you going to lose? The fact of the matter is, you can't just walk in. You have to become the largest in transaction banking. You have to be in the stock exchange. You have to be commodity. You have to have products that are aimed at the shopkeepers, products that are aimed at the individuals. And your CASA has to flow as a consequence. This is not something you can go and bid for. And that is why, as we grow, we have not had pressure in the proportion of our CASA. And where are you taking this multiple capabilities, these multiple cannons as you were, uh, what's the end game as you define it for yourself um, in order to make sure that you don't lose market share? No, see, what has happened is we doubled our distribution in the last 18 months, more than doubled. We were 725 branches, we're close to 2,000 branches now. Our products we've taken to all the branches. We've substantially changed our operating systems. We've changed our technology systems. We were the first to introduce 
our data warehouse almost eight years back, which has affected the way we do our credit, the way we do our marketing, the way we do our every single customer we have profitability for. We have segmented our uh, customers. Similarly, for instance, on the corporate side, we've got what we call a supply chain management for some of the largest corporates. The vendors deal with us, the corporate deals with us, the dealer deals with us, and we intelligently file transfer back into his SAP system, so he's closely linked with us. We are leaders in all the movement from paper to elect electronic means of money transfer. So as we move forward, we add new customers, but we continue to penetrate our existing customers with excellent execution, good technology, and we're getting more and more embedded into their business.